Welcome back to Anatomy and Physiology on Catalyst University. My name is Kevin Tokoff. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for future videos and notifications. In this video, we're going to talk about facial palsy, which is damage to the facial nerve. And really, we're going to hopefully be able to determine where that damage is actually occurring. Okay. Um, because it depends on whether or not an upper motor neuron is lesioned or if it's a lower motor neuron. And so we're going to use this just very simple flow chart to be able to figure that out. But to really understand it, we're going to need to take a look at this picture over here, which we're going to do on the next slide. But let me just introduce this. Um, the facial nerve is going to be cranial nerve number seven. And this nerve innervates all of the facial muscles. So when you think about zygomaticus major, zygomaticus minor, orbicularis oculi, orbicularis oris, frontalis, all your facial muscles are innervated by the facial nerve. And in addition to producing actions for facial expressions and so forth, uh, these nerves are going to allow some degree of tone in these muscles. Okay, So even when you're not actively making a facial expression, there's always muscle tone. But if you were to lose that tone, which could be either through a lesion of an upper motor neuron or a lower motor neuron, loss of that tone is going to cause something called facial droop, or that's one way we can think about it, where on one side of the face, those muscles are just going to be kind of dropped, okay? And so you're going to see droop on one side of the face, okay? It's going to look something like the picture that's up on the screen. Now, that droop can occur really either on the lower two-thirds of the face, really below the eyes, or it can include that plus the forehead, okay? So the first thing we need to ask ourselves is, do we have unilateral face droop in at least the lower two-thirds of the face, okay? It could be all of the face, but it at least has to be two-thirds in order to really uh, be sure that you've got a facial palsy. And if the answer to this question is no, you can pretty well rule down facial palsy that you probably don't have an issue with the facial nerve because if you did, then you'd have that facial droop. If the answer to this question is yes, then we then need to ask ourselves, are the forehead muscles functioning bilaterally? So a couple things. One, the forehead muscles are the frontalis muscles. We have a left frontalis and a right. And the action of those muscles is really to kind of elevate the eyebrows, it wrinkles the forehead. I'll show you a video of how this is tested in a, in a few minutes and we'll see this. But do those, both those muscles function bilaterally to the same extent? But if both of those forehead muscles are functioning, okay, both functions are preserved, so the left and right frontalis muscles have equal strength, and they both have strength, um, then you're more likely having an upper motor neuron lesion of the facial nerve. Now this might seem Greek to you, but we're going to watch a video that's going to show you how this is tested, and then we're going to go into this picture right here and really prove why that is. So watch the following video. I'm going to look at the cranial nerve number seven and actually have you dipped up here, eyebrows, frontalis muscle, very good, and close your eyes really tight, like you have soap in them. There's oculi muscles, very good. Don't let me open them, keep them tight. Good, okay, open up your eyes. Now I want you to show me all your teeth. I'm gonna look at the nasolabial folds, that's fine. Now I want you to puff out your uh, mouth like you're gonna kiss or gonna blow, very good. Here's ours, very good. Now I want you to puff out your cheeks. I pull with air, I'm gonna see if there's any air escape. Very good. Now if I were to told you, tell you a funny joke, would you smile? Okay, very good. So hopefully you found that enlightening. Now we're going to take a look at these pictures and we're really going to prove to ourselves what happens if we have a lower motor neuron lesion or an upper. We're going to start with the lower because I think it's a little bit more intuitive. But before we do that, let's actually explain uh, this diagram. So up here we have the cerebral cortex. This is really the precentral gyrus area. And these little circles, these are representing the cell bodies of the upper motor neurons of each of the facial nerves left and right. Okay? And for example, let's look at this one right here. Why don't you zoom in on it so we can see it a little bit better. We can follow this particular neuron down. This is an upper motor neuron. And we can see that it's going to synapse right here with this blue lower motor neuron. Okay. We can also follow some of these others. Let's look at this pink one right here. So this is also on the same side. This would be uh, actually the patient's left facial nerve. So we follow this one down, but notice this upper motor neuron actually crosses over and it will innervate this lower motor neuron on the other side. It's the same one, but just on the other side. Okay. Notice both of those are going to the forehead. So these are likely innervating the frontalis muscle. Okay. 
Now, if we look at the black ones right here, let's look at those. So we have these black cell bodies of upper motor neurons. We can follow them down, okay? And they cross over and they innervate these lower motor neurons right here, okay, right here. And those go either in one case to the forehead and in the other case, it goes down to the lower two thirds of the face, okay? Now, let me ask you a question. Is the forehead innervated bilaterally. In other words, if we look, let's say, at the left forehead, does it have innervation from both the left brain and the right brain? If I look at the left forehead, the answer is yes. It has innervation from both the left brain and the right brain. I can prove that to you. Look at this pink one right here. Okay, This is from the left brain, patient's left, that is. We follow this upper motor neuron down. It synapses with this lower motor neuron also on the left side. Okay. So it ha this left forehead has left brain innervation. But over here, look at this. Here's a neuron on the right side of the brain. We follow it up, it down, and it synapses with the same neuron right here, also on the left side. So the forehead actually has both left brain innervation and right brain innervation. We're going to hold that in mind. And now we're going to do the same thing and ask ourselves about the face. Does the left lower two-thirds of the face have left and right brain innervation? And the answer is no. Okay. If we look at the left face right here, if we follow this neuron back up, we can see that it's only innervated by an upper motor neuron coming from the contralateral side of the brain. In other words, this right face is only innervated ultimately through the right side of the brain, okay? So the forehead has bilateral innervation, okay? In other words, the left forehead has innervation from both the left and right brain, whereas the left face only has innervation from the right brain, okay? That's something very important to keep in mind, and we'll eventually use that information. So let's now assume we've got a lower motor neuron lesion. Okay. We're going to assume it's a lower motor neuron on the left side for the patient. And what I want you to notice here is that this right here, it's actually lesioning all of these. Okay. All of these right here. So it's lesioning this one that's going to the face. It's lesioning this one that's going to the forehead. And it's lesioning this other one going to the forehead. Now why is it important to know that all of these are being lesioned? Because notice, now the left half of the face has no innervation, and also the left half of the forehead has no innervation, okay? The entire left side of the head, really, and face has no innervation. And so what you would expect to see in a lower motor neuron lesion, if it's on the left side, is you would see droop on that side throughout the entire face, okay? And in that case, the left forehead, the left frontalis, would not be functioning bilaterally because all of the innervation to the left frontalis, the left forehead, has been obliterated, and all of the innervation to the left face has been obliterated. So in a lower motor neuron lesion, you would actually have uh, really the entire half of the head and face, it would have complete loss of tone, okay? And so what we can say generally there is if we have a, for the facial nerve, if we have a left lower motor neuron lesion, we're going to have drooping on the entire left half of the face and head, including the left forehead. If we were to flip this and have the lesion on the right side, right lower motor neuron lesion, everything would be flipped. We'd have droopage on the right half of the head and face, all of it, right face, right forehead. So that's the key there. With, an, with a lower motor neuron lesion, okay, you're going to lose the tone and the, really the action of all the muscles, every one, all of them, on the entire side of the head and face, including the forehead. Okay? And that's really because you've actually cut the innervation to the face right here and really to all of the forehead. Okay? You're just getting an entire transection right there. That's going to change when we look at an upper motor neuron lesion, okay? And to do that, we're really gonna follow the tracks of these upper motor neurons and see what the effect is, okay? So let's zoom in on this. We're now gonna look at an upper motor neuron lesion on the patient's left side, okay? So let's actually follow this. So let's look at this first one, okay? This one is going down. 
and it's going to synapse with this blue neuron right here, which is leading to the forehead. Okay, so does that mean we have loss of forehead function? Not necessarily. Okay, I'll show you why in a minute. Okay, let's look at this one right here, this pink one that crosses over. Well, okay, we follow it down. It's been lesioned, but it would go to this neuron right here, to the other forehead. So are we going to have loss of forehead on both sides? Again, no. We're going to keep going. Let's follow right here these neurons, these black ones. We follow these down. They cross over to these ones right here. One of these leads to the forehead. The other leads to the face. Now let me ask you a question. Is there any other neuron that's going to allow innervation to the lower two-thirds of the right half of the face? And the answer is no. If we backtrack this neuron right here, it's only innervated by this one upper motor neuron, and it's been lesioned, okay? So if we have an upper motor neuron lesion, at the very least, we should expect to see loss of the facial tone on the lower two-thirds on the contralateral side. In other words, if we have an upper motor neuron lesion on the left side of the facial nerve, we're going to lose the right face. Now the question is, do we lose innervation and tone on the forehead muscles in an upper motor neuron lesion? And the answer is no. And here's why. Yes, we have an upper motor neuron lesion on the left side, but we still have all of these neurons on the right side intact. And let's follow them. Let's look at this first one right here. We follow this upper motor neuron, and it's going to this one, okay, which goes to the forehead. So we still have innervation to the forehead, okay, on the left side. If we look at this one right here, this pink one, follow it down, synapses with this lower motor neuron that goes to the other side, the right forehead. So in other words, in an upper motor neuron lesion, as long as it's just one side, we still have a functioning other side. And so that's going to lead to innervation remaining on both sides still. So to take a 30,000 foot view at this, if we have a lower motor neuron lesion of the facial nerve, we're going to expect that the entire half of one side of the head and face is going to be drooping and it's going to lose its innervation. And it's going to be the same side as where the lesion is. In other words, a left lower motor neuron lesion is going to produce droopage of the entire left half of the face and head, including the forehead. A right lower motor neuron lesion is going to do the same thing on the other side. We'd have right face and right forehead droopage on that side. So lower motor neuron lesion, it's the entire side, and it's the ipsilateral side as the lesion. Same side as the lesion. In contrast for an upper motor neuron lesion, let's say on the left side, then we'd see droopage on the right side, but only on the lower two-thirds. The forehead on that side is going to be preserved. Okay? And that's because we still have a functioning right uh, series of upper motor neurons here. Okay? So upper motor neuron lesion, you're going to have the entire forehead working bilaterally. It's going to be preserved, but you're going to have this uh, droopage on the lower two-thirds on the contralateral side. So upper motor neuron lesion, think contralateral, forehead preserved. Lower motor neuron, ipsilateral, forehead muscle is not preserved. So Hopefully this makes sense. We can then go back and look at this flow chart and make some sense of it. Does the person have unilateral facial droop in at least the lower two thirds of the face? If your answer is no, well then you can probably rule down a facial palsy, which would be a damage to that facial nerve. If your answer is yes, you then look at the forehead muscles and see if they're functioning bilaterally. Now remember, if they're functioning bilaterally, so your answer is yes, um, that's indicative of an upper motor neuron lesion, right? Because in an upper motor neuron lesion, we only have a droopage of the face on the contralateral side. We have the forehead muscles being preserved, frontalis muscles. But if they're not functioning bilaterally, so no, um, then you're going to have a lower motor neuron lesion that really gets the entire half of the head and face drooping. And again, we've hit this point to death, but it's on the same side as that facial droop. Okay? the entire half of that face and head, and that would be a lower motor neuron lesion. So hopefully this video gave you a good understanding of facial palsy, damage to the facial nerve, and really why uh, we observe the things that we do. 
please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for future videos and notifications. Thank you.